Hello everyone and welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. It's time to move ahead on the discrete audio amplifier project. Finally got my Mauser package in. Been waiting on this. It's been holding me up. Got some more parts. And again, big thank you to Patreon supporters. You have helped me purchase this stuff. Well, yes, I got more parts I need for the project. If you remember from an earlier video, I bought these resistors from DigiKey. And they look like the eighth watt size. However, they are considered quarter watt. They're a miniature quarter watt size. But I wanted to use the regular quarter watt size. So I went back to DigiKey looking for them. And all the resistors that I bought that were those miniature quarter watt sizes are only available in that size. So, oh great. So I went to Mauser and bought the uh, normal quarter watt sized metal film resistors. So I just went ahead and bought everything else there. Just more uh, capacitors, uh, transistors I wanted to get. Uh, what else? Oh, the trimmers I need for setting the bias. So what I want to talk about today is setting the bias on the amp. The uh, thermal stability and the biasing circuit. Now I know some people are asking, when in the heck are you ever going to get the amplifier working? And we've been through all these videos and still no amplifier. YouTube's not my main job, so you know this is kind of a hobby for me, and I can work on it when I, you know, get the opportunity. So you know, like I say, I'm not in any hurry. It will eventually happen. Just stick with me here. I wanted to make a series of videos as I go through, you know, help people understand how these things work, and you know, learn things myself on the way. So hopefully you stick with me here and uh, we'll get through it. Just kick back and hopefully you pick something up along the way. Another thing is these circuits are kind of like a sequential puzzle. You have to figure one thing out before you can move ahead to the next part. And this is a perfect example here. This is the biasing circuit, a simple biasing circuit. And I believe it was the last video I had to figure out what the current was going to be in the voltage amplification stage because the biasing circuit is pretty much in that circuit because the current flowing in the voltage amplification stage flows through this biasing circuit. I had to have that all figured out because the current flowing in the voltage amplification stage is going to affect how the biasing circuit works. Okay, so let's talk about the biasing circuit. Sometimes you might hear it referred to as a biasing servo, perhaps, or even a VBE multiplier. This circuit has two purposes. The first thing is to eliminate crossover distortion. It keeps the output stage turned on just a little bit to eliminate that. So let me explain how that works. So you have a circuit set up like this, and I'm just using resistors as my current sources here. It'll suffice for the description. So pretend for a moment that this circuit is not here. You know, it's just an open circuit. Well, all of the current would flow through the resistor into the base, turn this on hard. Same thing down here. You know, current would come out of here, turn this on hard. You'd have very heavy current flowing through as much as the supply could give and something would blow, probably the output transistors would be damaged. So what we do is we place this biasing circuit here, which diverts current away from the bases, but allows just enough to go through to turn the output transistors on just a little bit, and that will eliminate the crossover distortion. So let me explain more about crossover distortion. Let's say that we just shorted these two bases together and we put a signal on the bases of these transistors well because they're shorted together it's going to see the same voltage 
So relative to this node here, if the signal is at zero volts, well, no current can flow in the output because you have to remember that to get current to flow through these transistors, you have to exceed the base emitter voltage, which is about 650 millivolts. And there's two transistors, so it's about 1.3 volts. Now I know this speed up resistor will kind of wreck my description here, but just ignore it for my explanation. And the same down here, you have to have negative 1.3 volts before you can get enough voltage to turn these transistors on. So if you have the signal starting at zero, the output, which I'm showing down here, will be zero until we hit this 1.3 volts. Once we do, the upper stage turns on and it will conduct and follow the waveform until it falls back to 1.3 volts. And again, the voltage won't be enough and it turns off as it passes through zero to negative 1.3 volts. Once it hits that, the bottom transistor turns on and it conducts for the negative half of the cycle. So the idea is to allow just enough current to flow through to turn the output stage on and when the output stage is already pre-turned on or biased just to use the proper term you're not going to have these dead zones anymore you'll have a perfect sine wave so that in a nutshell is how it eliminates crossover distortion another responsibility of the biasing circuit is thermal tracking if you're familiar with transistors you know that as they heat up they want to conduct more you know, their gain goes up. And that could lead to a positive feedback situation where as it heats up it conducts more and because it's conducting more it gets hotter still and then it conducts even more and that cycle continues until they get too hot or you know something gets damaged. So with this biasing circuit you put some sort of sensor right on the heat sink so the heat that these output transistors create are picked up by the sensing device and in many cases it's this transistor itself as this transistor gets warmer it will conduct more as well and when it conducts more it diverts current away from the output stage and that makes it conduct less so you know as these get hotter this conducts more takes current away and, and brings the biasing current back into check so you avoid that thermal runaway situation. Now you will see different versions of the circuit. If you've looked at schematics of older amplifiers from the earlier days you might see a thermistor used. Um, sometimes you'll see diodes. As you move up in complexity you'll start to see active devices like here where I'm using a transistor and it gets even more complex and you'll see a diode used as a sensor and a couple transistors as the amplifying device which controls the current so for my circuit I'm going to attempt to use a single transistor with some resistors so what we have here is a collector to base resistor which brings some current down to the base to turn on this transistor a little bit but we want to control the amount of current so down here we put another resistor and in this case we're using a variable resistor so we can adjust the amount of current that this transistor conducts so we can set the bias at just the right point so what would be the recommended bias current flowing in the output stage for this amplifier I'm going to shoot for somewhere between 25 and 50 milliamps probably around 35 milliamps. Now as the amplifier starts from cold and heats up, it may not track perfectly. That's okay. It's never going to be perfect, but I want it to stay within a range. If it falls out of a certain range, you know, if the current gets too low, then you can start seeing crossover distortion issues. And if it gets too high, the amplifier could get warmer and potentially run into a thermal runaway even with this circuit installed so so that's the idea of the circuit tracking the thermals of the output transistors 
to keep that bias in check. Now you might think of running the bias even higher because you know the higher you are the further you are away from crossover distortion issues. In fact if you run it high enough eventually you'll be into class A. Well there's a problem it's called GM doubling. So if you look at a graph of the gain of the positive ne negative output stage you know the gain of the emitter follower type circuit is in real life it's less than one and you'd think it would be flat but at the point it crosses zero it actually would make a little bump like this and if you have the gain set too high you make this bump a little larger you want to have this gain at a point where that bump is you know it's, it's very small and it's not going to cause distortion because when the gain is not linear that opens the door for higher distortion now of course negative feedback corrects a lot of this away but it can only do so much you want to have the minimum amount of distortion in the circuit before you apply negative feedback so keeping the distortion as low as possible is recommended so if you set the gain at an optimum level you won't have that problem with GM doubling and the astute viewer might say why isn't that a problem with class A amplifiers we have to remember, Class A amplifiers are run with both transistors conducting at high current at full 360 degree cycle. You know, the upper and the lower transistors would be conducting in a full 360 degree cycle of the waveform. Both transistors are always conducting. You're not running in and out of that GM doubling region. And I should mention that's why a lot of people like Class A amplifiers. To me, you know, to get any decent power from an amplifier and being Class A means you need a lot of power. You know, I think if you think about it, a 100 watt amplifier running in Class A is going to need <laughs> close to a thousand watts. Depends on the circuit, but it'll be close to a thousand watts it would need. So that would take a lot of effort. Usually Class A amplifiers are limited to lower powers, but they do get around that issue of crossover distortion. You know, there is no crossover. There's no issue with the GM doubling and things like that. So just thought I'd mention that. A couple design considerations of this type of bias circuit is to put the trimmer or potentiometer down in the base to emitter part of the circuit. The reason being if you put it up here and you use the trimmer like in older amplifiers you might see it used up here what happens is if the trimmer is dirty you know they get crusty especially those types that use an open design it gets dirt in the wiper area and it can cause an open circuit what happens it turns this transistor off now this circuit is not shunning current anymore full current goes into your output stage on both sides turns both transistors on hard and stuff blows up if you put your trimmer down in this part of the circuit and there's a bad connection you know say the wiper arm goes open well it would tend to turn this transistor on hard and collapse the voltage between here which essentially just turns off the bias so it no harm done I mean it would sound like crap but it won't blow things up sometimes you see the potentiometer or trimmer connected at this point you know the wiper arm goes to the base now that for the same reason that's not a good idea because if the base goes open this transistor turns off and you get full current in your output stage and things go bang. The final version of my circuit, if this works out, I'll have another resistor right here. What that's going to do is limit the range that you can adjust this bias. Because if you get somebody in there fiddling with a screwdriver, you know, they go flipping this trimmer and it could turn this bias up too much. So if you put a range limiting resistor here, 
to prevent them from turning the bias up too high accidentally. Okay, well, that was quite a lot said. So what I'm going to do is set up the output stage on the breadboard. It's going to be very simple because I'm not worried about you know, putting signals through it. I'm just worried about you know, checking the thermal tracking and you know, setting the bias and measuring it and see how it works. So before I actually solder that board up I was talking about in the other video, um, I want to try it on this board because if I end up having to redesign it, then I have to go back and rework the soldered together board, which I don't really want to do. So uh, I'll just put it together on the socket board here and see how that works out. And for the fans of Snickers, he's not interested. He's napulating right now.